Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence. We thank you for this beautiful day you have given unto us. Thank you, Lord, mighty Father, for gathering us here, Lord, with a purpose that you want us to know you better, Jehovah. You want to teach to teach us your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us, oh God. Thank you for every word that you have taught us. Thank you for those who have been teaching us. Your servant, mighty Father, King of Glory, our brethren, mighty Father. Thank you for those who have found time to come and gather with us, oh Jehovah. We bless your mighty name and we thank you for each one of us. Even those who are watching online, we pray that, Lord, you bless them. You open their ears, oh God. We thank you for everything because you are good, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. We are just taking a few minutes because I know time is gone. And uh, as she has said today, this, this is the month of Thanksgiving. Are we not giving thanks to God? Yeah. From January, February. Yeah. We are. Eh? Yes. So we are, we, are, we are giving God thanks for everything that he has done to us. I just want us to open our Bible Psalms 107. We're taking a few minutes because we want to sit down and listen to the word of God. Yeah, that is building us every Thursday. We bless God. I just want to read this one. Psalms 107, verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks. Are you there? I know I'm very speed. I can open, I can read alone and finish alone. Are you there? Psalms 107. Okay, verse 1, let me read. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the trouble, and gathered in, in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. The Bible says, let us give God thanks. Just go before God, just one minute, give God thanks. Even for the gifts of life he has given us. As for the whole year we have been meeting here to this day, listening to the word of God, we have been meeting and sending and many other days. And also, so much has been, uh, he has been doing to us, our families, our everything has provided for us. So let us go give God thanks. Just one minute. Father, we thank you. Father, Lord, thank you. 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 Thank we cannot count on what we have to ask my father from January to this month. This month. You have been so faithful to you have provided for us, oh God. You have given us, my father, Lord, the desires of your heart and to go back. Thank you then for allowing us to meet, oh my father, every last day to go back. And my father, thank you for your servant who have been teaching us the word. We bless your mighty name. Thank you for everything. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give thanks and we give honor. We worship you in the beauty of heaven. The Bible says we give thanks every day, every hour, every minute. We cannot count the blessings, the many things that we have done to us, my Father. There are so many that we cannot count, but we just want to tell you thank you, Father. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for taking care of our families. Thank you for bringing us here every Thursday, Jehovah, from January August. Thank you for feeding us with your word, O Jehovah. Thank you for great revelation that you have given unto your mighty name, Jehovah. We bless your mighty name and we honor you. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. We bless your mighty name. And now the last one is we call our teacher today. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, verse 6. It says that, Thus says the Lord. Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and the Israel, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no other God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare that it is, is to come and what will happen. Praise the name of the Lord. He is again telling us he is the Lord. So we are not worried. Even when we step in 2024, we bless God because there will be a mighty, mighty plant and purpose of God as a church, as a family, even the plants we have for ourselves, the plan we have for the church, the plan we have for the, 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 the Berean. So I just want us to go before God and again, let us lift every need before God. Let us lift the plans that we have before God so that God can, as, as we plan, we can be in his midst. We can know that we are not planning beside him, but within him. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. 
Yes, you are the Lord. You are everything. You are the God. You are the God. We thank you, Father. Because even as we sit here, as we wait to be, God Almighty, as we pray, even for the things to come and wait for, we are lifting everything out of you. That God Almighty will help us plan. That God Almighty will be, will be within your plan to go. Or whatever we plan as a church, mighty Father, as 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 Bereani, oh God, as family school, as you been to my father, it will be within your plan. Let us pray. Once again, my Father, we thank you. The Bible says we lift our plans and our vision and our everything unto you. As Berean, we are praying that God, even as we sit down to plan for 2024, we shall be within plan. And whatever we are going to do, Jehovah shall please you, my Father, because you are God. Even as a ministry, as a church, oh God, as individuals, as families, mighty Father, we are praying that you are going to help us, my Father, in everything, Jehovah, that we shall please you, oh God, and it shall be within your purpose in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to pray, Father, for our brother Paul, who is going to take up Jehovah and take us through that the Holy Spirit of God will be within him. You are going to put your word in his, in his mouth. You are going to open our ears and our heart, oh my Father, our spiritual ears, our spiritual eyes, our spiritual heart, so that we can hear and the mighty Father understand this word. We thank you for those who have come and also those who are the way, Jehovah. We bless your mind. Those who are not within us, we also bless them, Jehovah. We pray that God Almighty, even the leadership of this ministry, Jehovah, God Almighty, we are going to, to bless them. You know the, the desires of the heart that each one of, us, of them, Jehovah, our, our bishop, mighty father, his family, our pastors, oh God, their families, Jehovah, we pray for them, Jehovah God. Even our restoration pastor, Pastor Joyce, and the family, we leave them before you, and we thank you for everything. We pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now you can help me <laughs> invite our, our, our teacher today. Amen. Uh, praise God. Amen. Praise God once again. Amen. Uh, am I audible enough? I'm good? Mm. Uh, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, welcome to our Bible study service. Uh, I'd like just to make some apologies. There's something that is going on in the main sanctuary. That's why we are meeting in the Youth Fellowship Hall because of what is going on in the main sanctuary. But all in all, uh, God is good, and he's, it's my prayer that this word will reach many people. Amen. So I would like this time that, uh, that, that we have, let it be an interactive session. And Kate, maybe you can just come. I don't want to shout so much. Yeah, let, let, let this session be an interactive session because we are here to learn the word of God. I'm also here to learn the word of God. I'm just a vessel used by him just uh, to share what I have today. Amen. Uh, so uh, last week we started in the, with the book of Romans chapter 9. And before I go uh, to Romans chapter 9, I'd just like us to have a recap of the book of Romans. Uh, the book of Romans is well known as the book of salvation. And this book, uh, when you study it, you'll be able to learn what salvation is, especially f for new, new believers. This is a very good book to learn about salvation. And... The first, this book is divided in three divisions. The first division is from chapter 1 to chapter 8. That is the doctrine of salvation. Then from chapter 9 to chapter 10, it's uh, the, about the nation of Israel. Then the last uh, session from uh, chapter 12 all the way to, is it 16? No, is it 12 to... 12, yeah, 12 to 16, 
it's about the practical application uh, in a believer's life. What will what you have learned from all the way from chapter one to chapter to, of all the way from chapter one to chapter eleven, then we'll see how to, to apply uh, uh, what you have learned in in the third division. That is practical application. So we we were we went through. For the last, like, is it almost like four or five months, uh, we've gone through the, the doctrine of salvation. That is from chapter 1 to chapter 8. And just a recap, uh, if you see chapter 5 and 6, it speaks more of justification by faith. Chapter, uh, that, that is chapter 5. Chapter 6, it, it spoke about the power of sin broken and chapter 7 uh, it, it, it speaks about the role of the law and struggle with sin then chapter 8 uh, it, it speaks about uh, again about the justification about justification about sanctification and glorification so at this point I'd like us to sit down Pauline mini mesahau come <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so I'd like uh, this session to be uh, an interactive session so that you may be blessed, so that you may be able to know the Word of God. So, uh, as I have said, chapter 8, uh, it dealt more with justification, sanctification, and glorification. Then, uh, chapter 9, 10, and 11 is about the nation of Israel. And uh, in this chapter, we, we are going to, uh, in this uh, division, we are going to see about three main things about God. Chapter 9 deals with uh, Israel, Israel's past, which depicts God's sovereignty. Chapter 10 deals with uh, Israel's present which reveals God's equity, and chapter 11 deals with the future dealing of Israel, or the future uh, God's dealing with Israel, which depicts uh, God's integrity. So uh, we, are about, we are in chapter 9, which is about God's sovereignty, and we are able to learn quite a number of things from chapter 9. Before I just continue, I would like just to ask a question. Who remembers what the word sovereignty means? I, I think uh, sovereignty means uh, absolute. You can stand up. Uh -huh. I think sovereignty means uh, absolute authority of God. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, absolute authority of God. Yeah, it means that God has absolute power and authority, just as you've said, to do all things according to his own pleasure. We are just but vessels. God created us because of his love for us. He created us in his own image, and he created us to, uh, to worship him and just to obey his word. So we are just there but vessels, and he can do whatever he wants to do with us. Amen. And we are going to look at a certain book which, is, which depicts uh, God's sovereignty uh, through this chapter 9. And we, we are going to understand the, uh, more about God's sovereignty. So we learned uh, about God's sovereignty and we are continuing to learn about his sovereignty and also the and also the word of God that never fails. We are going to see that the word of God never fails. So uh, the first uh, section that we covered was from verse 1 to 5, in uh, which, uh, Paul, which uh, my topic was that Paul's sorrow because of unbelief of Israel. Paul's sorrow because of unbelief of Israel. And here Paul was trying to talk about uh, the Jews, how the Jews rejected the Messiah, him being a Jew, he was even persecuted by the Jews because of uh, bringing Gentiles to the, to the city of Jerusalem 
or to the temple. Uh, he was almost killed, but he tried and ministered to them because of the love that he had. He tried to minister to them and to justify himself why, why he was able to change from being a Pharisee and to, to becoming a Christian. But up to date, we know so many Jews right up to date, they still reject uh, the Messiah. So this was the plea of Paul. Why, this is why he covered uh, chapter 9, 10, and 11, to try, trying to explain to the Gentiles, him being a Jew, or rather Christ being a Jew, the mess, why the Jews rejected or have rejected Christ. We will come to see also that God has a good plan for the nation of Israel. God has a good plan for the Jews, but his word remains to be the same. So here we, are, we were able to see uh, quite a number of things, and we, was, we saw that uh, about God's sovereignty that he's not a respecter of persons. We saw that... Uh, that why God uh, also chose the Gentiles who are ready to accept the word of God. And through that, we'll, we are going also to see the, why God had to punish the nation of Israel and why he has a plan for the nation of Israel. So we went through from verse 5 all the way to verse 24. So uh, we'll, we'll go to verse 25. And I believe by today we'll, have, we'll finish uh, chapter 9. And God willing, from next year, we, we are going to dwell with chapter, chapter 10 going forward. And I believe everyone will be blessed. So we, uh, we learned so many things uh, last week about God's sovereignty, and we'll continue uh, to learn about his sovereignty today. So if you have your Bible, kindly open uh, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 from verse 25. We read from verse 25 to 29. I would like someone to read for me uh, from verse 25 to 29. From verse uh, 25 to 29. There they will be called sons of the living God. 27. And the Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sons of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. Verse 28. For the Lord will cut out his descendants upon the heart fully and without delay. 29. And as Isaiah predicted, if the, if the Lord of us had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. And then it was there. You are talking to 29. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so we are still on the topic or subtopic of God's sovereignty. I remember we shared last week, we shared from verse 1 to 5. Then from chapter 6 all the way to 29, it was about God's sovereignty. We were able to see, uh, we were able to see the, the examples in the Bible. Uh, we saw about Rebecca, about, uh, uh, about Esau and Jacob. We saw about uh, the story of Pharaoh. We saw also about uh, the story of Moses and a believer's life. And in all this, what was coming out was God's sovereign rule. And we'll continue with that. So uh, here in verse 25 to 29, we see uh, 
one of the main truths, which is the word of God that never fails. And in this uh, Old Testament prophecies, we see the how how Jews rejected uh, how how it came to pass about the Jews rejecting uh, the Messiah, and also we see the inclusion of the Gentiles uh, in the family of God. And uh, as we as we started, I told you that there is a book that will will be able to have a summary of it so that we understand the sovereignty of God, and that is uh, from the book of Hosea. And here, here Paul quoted the book of Hosea. And I would like us just to read a bit of Hosea, which will be key verses for us to understand the sovereignty of God. So uh, Hosea, I would like someone to read Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2. From verse, uh, Hosea chapter 2, verse 13. Hosea chapter 2, verse 13. Ah, uh, Hosea chapter 2, verse 23, sorry. And Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Hosea chapter 2, verse 23. And Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Anyone is there? Yes? Hosea 2, verse 28. I will grant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I call. Not my love to I will say to those call. To those call. Not my people. You are my people. And they will say you are my God. And that's Hosea chapter 2, verse 23. Uh -huh. Chapter 1, verse 10. I read it from ESV. Yes. Hosea 1, 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And in the place where it will say to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. Amen. Thank you. I would like you to note uh, that word, you are not my people. We'll come to see how that comes to be. So uh, just a summary of the book of Hosea. We know Hosea was uh, a prophet uh, during the reign of Jerobo Je Jeroboam II, who was a very evil king. And God had to raise a prophet during that time to go and, uh, and warn or call the people of Israel to repentance. So he is, a, he is a man who came from Ephraim. Ephraim was the northern part of uh, Judah. You remember Judah was divided into two. So he, uh, Hosea came from the northern part of Judah. He was called on behalf of God just to, uh, to go and warn the people of Israel or to tell them to go to come back to God. Hosea is a very good book for us to see the, uh, the, the plan that God has for the Israelites or the plan that God has for us as Christians. And we are going to see how God uh, depicted, uh, depicted the, the, his love in this book. So he was, called, he was commissioned <coughs> by God to, uh, to, to lead Israel into repentance. And by laying bare Israel's covenant of unfaithfulness. Remember, the Israelites had turned away from God and the covenant that they broke the covenant that they had during, uh, <coughs> during this time. There was a lot of idolatry and they just basically abandoned the ways of God. So Hosea, being a righteous man, was commanded by God to marry a prostitute. Imagine, you're commanded mm -hmm. by God mm -hmm. to marry mm -hmm. a prostitute who was called Goma. Mm -hmm. Remember what we said about God's sovereignty. God is sovereign. 
he has the power and authority to do whatever he pleases. Hosea is just a vessel like you and me. And God chose that vessel to marry a prostitute. Why did he choose uh, Hosea to marry a prostitute? It's because he wanted to demonstrate his judgment and restoration of Israel, of which you are going to see. So him being a, a righteous man, he was commanded to marry a prostitute who was called Goma. And one, one may wonder why God did so. This, uh, and we have seen this as just a demonstration of God, uh, God's uh, sovereignty. All this was a symbolic, a, a prophetic symbol of God's relationship with Israel. Uh, if you read uh, Hosea chapter 3 verse 1, maybe uh, we, someone can read just briefly uh, Hosea chapter 3 verse 1. We'll see why God appointed Hosea. Yes. Hosea 3 1. Yes, we. Hosea redeems his wife. And the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by another man, and is an adulteress. Even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes and their sins. Thank you. Imagine, uh, Hosea was told again to go and redeem his wife who was sleeping with outside there. Imagine this was your wife. He goes and sleeps with other people. Then you're told you go and redeem. You go and redeem your wife to come back eh? and continue loving him, uh, loving her. So that's a relationship of how Israel was with God. If you look uh, at the history of Israel, back during the time of uh, Moses, during, uh, in, uh, during the time of, of the pharaohs, when, when the Israelites were, were in bondage, God delivered them. And on their way to the, uh, to the promised land, he made a covenant with them at Mount Sinai. This is where we get the Ten Commandments. And he was really faithful to the people of Israel. He promised them to reach Canaan, uh, to a, a promised land. Yet, the Israelites, after all this, they turned away from God and started worshipping Baal and many other gods. So, that is the relationship that God was trying to demonstrate. Hosea was like uh, representing God and Goma was representing Israel. The way Goma was sleeping around, it's the way uh, Israel was, ha, had turned away from God. So this is a good demonstration of, to show the, the life of Israelites and the rejection, why, why God rejected them. Not only the Israelites, even us Christians. There are so many ways. You know, uh, the book of Hosea also represents the life of a Christian. The word of God tells us that uh, Christ loves the, the church. He loves the church so much. He quotes in the book of Ephesians that, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. And yet, we are so unfaithful to God in many ways, but he always remains to be faithful. This is the love of God he has for us, the mercy that he has for us. So we really need to have a look or just internalize, try and internalize the love of God because we cannot fathom the love of God because it's so great that we cannot uh, understand it. So, this is the, uh, in this story, in, in, in what we are learning in the book of Hosea, we see the love of God that he had for the nation of Israel. So he had to send a prophet to try and bring them back to him. So, 
Uh, Hosea uh, had three children. And we'll see the names of these children. Because the, all the names meant judgment. Remember when you are reading the book of, uh, as you are reading uh, Romans chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 25, the summer we saw that God said, not my people. We will come and have a look at it in more depth so that we understand what uh, God meant or what Paul was meaning uh, in what, in, on how he was quoting the book of Hosea. So the first child was called Jezreel. And Jezreel uh, is named after the valley of Jezreel. It's, it's, uh, the, the name Jezreel is also seen in the city there was a city called Jezreel where Ahab and Jezebel reigned. The first one, uh, uh, the valley of Jezreel, it, was a, uh, it is described as a very good place. It, it was a place that was blossoming. But because of the war that was there between Israelites and other, 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 other nations, it was uh, this good place had turned to a place of blood bath because it's where there were a lot of battles that were taking place and it was converted to a place of blood we see also uh, the city of jezreel the city of jezreel is where king ahab and the wife jezebel were reigning and we see in this city there are so many atrocities that were happening. There were so many killings and bloodbath that was happening because we all know who Jezebel was. He used to kill especially the people of God. So what does uh, that name represent? It represents the nation of Israel. Israel, what God had, had intended before, it was a place of peace. It was a place where God could, could come and reign. It was a place where God could be uh, the leader. You remember before the, the Israelites started having kings, they were being ruled by judges. And this was the plan of God from the beginning. But because of the, because, uh, of the disobedience and the hard-heartedness of the Israelites, they coveted other nations and they said they want to have a king. And since the time they had their first king, the nation of Israel was messed up. We see God had intended it to be a good place where he him, himself was the leader through the judges. But it came and was messed up just as the uh, valley of Jezreel, which was a very good place a place of blossoming, but it came to be a place of blood bath. So th that was the first child who was called, and he was a son. Who, and you, you, can, you can have a look at Hosea chapter 1 from verse 3 to 5 uh, at your own time. Then the second child was called Lo Ruham, Ro, Lo Ruhama. Lo Ruhama. And the word Ruhama means God's tender mercy. Other versions say the precious womb of a woman. This is where we see God's mercy. This is where we see God's love being demonstrated. But the word Lo, you see it's Lo, Lo Ruham. Hmm? Lo Ruhama, lo Ruhama. The word lo here means no. We've seen that ru, Ruhama means God's tender mercy. And now this word that comes before, it's, uh, it means no, which means no tender mercy. Which means no tender mercy. And from there we'll see there's a lot of judgments that Israel uh, faced. God had, yes, he loved them, but he had to bring judgment 
upon them. But still, because of his love and mercy, we will come to see in, the, in, uh, in chapter, uh, chapter 10 and 11 that still God has planned for the nation of Israel. We see that his love is so big that he has his own plan on how he will save the nation of Israel. Now, uh, the, the, uh, she, that, that, that uh, was a girl. So uh, Hosea had two, two, uh, three children, two sons and a daughter. So the second child was a girl. And now the third child was called Lo Ami. Lo Ami, which means, uh, the word Ami means people. The word Lo, we saw, we saw it means no. So, when you connect it, it means not my people. So, if you connect this with what uh, Paul was saying in verse 25, I can just read it again. As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people. And I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. You see here we see uh, uh, God disowning the Israelites, telling, uh, uh, telling them that they are not his people. And uh, as my friend read uh, verse, uh, Hosea chapter 1, verse 10, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, where we, s we see that uh, Paul was saying that uh, or Paul quoted uh, that verse saying, in every in very place where it, it said to them, you are not my people, they will be called uh, the children of the living God. But if you see, uh, if you see verse, Hosea verse 1, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, can someone read it again? Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Amen. Here we see that God has rejected Israel. But again, because of his love and mercy, uh, we see that the judgment of God does not last forever. And he says uh, that one day Israel will be restored and they will be called sons of the living God. So God has a plan for the nation of Israel. We all know what is happening in Israel. And there's, there has been a lot of debate about the nation of Israel, whereby uh, Christians are divided. Some are supporting what Israel is doing. Others are saying that is, uh, they are overdoing it. You see, uh, you know how uh, the, this war about Israel and Hamas, we, we all know that Hamas is a terrorist uh, organization in which the nation of Israel are trying to eradicate. But in the midst of eradicating them, there are so many innocent people who are being killed. There are so many, uh, apart from Muslims, there are so many Christians who are in Gaza who are being killed there. There are so many children who are being killed there. But as a Christian, where do you stand? I know this, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, it's a tricky tr uh, topic, but as you read your, the word of God, you'll be able to know where the word of God stands. Because remember uh, w w what we learned last week. The way, uh, the way uh, Jesus was so harsh or was so hard on the Pharisees when, when he told them that, uh, especially in... Uh, let me just have a look at one of the verses here. 
in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12, uh, Jesus Christ spoke to the Jewish leaders about some, some of them being cut off and thrown in outer darkness. There is also John chapter 3 from verse 3 to 5, where uh, Christ was telling, uh, was telling Nicodemus, who was, a, who was a, a night disciple of Jesus, and he was a leader, he was a Pharisee, that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We also learned about Matthew chapter 21 from verse 42 to 43, where Christ said that you have never read, in the, have you never read in the scriptures that the stone that, which represents uh, Christ, the stone that the builders uh, rejected, the, the builders represent the Jewish nation, has become a cornerstone. A cornerstone represents the church. This was the Lord's doing and it was marvelous in, your, in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people producing fruits. Those are the Christians. So, whether you're a Jew or not, God is not a respecter of persons. So, even now, those Israelites, who, those Jews who don't know Christ, those who are living according to their ways, we all know or some of us know uh, what is happening in Israel. The way they advocate for things like LGBTQ. That's their way of life. And the other day they wanted to, to pass an, a, a motion that if you, if you spread the gospel, if you try to convert someone to Christianity or any other kind of religion, you should be thrown to jail. But we thank God it didn't pass. Why should they uh, accept what is called evil and reject what is called good. And the word of God says that, oh, unto you who call evil good and good, evil. So the word of God remains, uh, 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 remains true. Whether you're a Jew or a, or a Gentile, if you don't obey the word of God, if you don't accept Christ in your life, there's no way you can see the kingdom of God. Even right now, I believe there are remnants in Israel, and it's only God who knows that. We cannot help God uh, to, uh, to preserve the nation of Israel. God has his own way. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. As Christians, we need to pray for the human race to come to know the love of Christ. Whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Muslim, whether, whether you're from Palestine, whether you're from is uh, uh, Tel Aviv, whether you're from Jerusalem, if you don't know God and, and if you reject Christ, there's no way the kingdom of heaven, uh, there's no way you'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. So it's my prayer that God will rule or God will continue. Uh, his, uh, it's my prayer that uh, God will just continue uh, reaching out to the nation of Israel. God will continue reaching out to the people who are living there so that they may know Christ. He has his own good plan, of which we'll come to see in uh, chapter, chapter 11. He has a, a, his own plan for the nation of Israel, and it's a remnant, not all Jews will be saved, but there's a remnant that God has put for them to be saved. There's the doctrine of election of which you cannot question God. It is, as we have seen, that it's God's sovereign rule and authority. His sovereignty is one that stands out and he remains to be God. So when someone just comes to tell you where are you standing at, you say you're standing by the word of God. You're standing by the word of God, and it's good just to pray for the nation of Israel as you're praying for your own country. Amen. Amen. So uh, we've seen, in this scripture, we've, uh, in the book of Hosea, we've seen about a summary 
of God's sovereign rule and the plan that he has for the people of Israel. Amen. So uh, verse, uh, from verse 27, we see Isaiah crying out concerning Israel that though the number of the Israelites be like the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and finality. Just as we have just spoken, it's only a remnant that will be saved. Those Jews who will come to accept Christ in their life. It is just as Isaiah said uh, previously, that is verse 29, unless the Lord Almighty had left us descendants, we will have become like Sodom, we will have become like Gomorrah. We thank God for, for the Gentiles. We thank God for us as Gentiles who are called to be the children of God. Those who have accepted Christ in their life, we are called to be the children of God and we are in the same lineage of the descendants of the patriarchs, Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's my prayer that we will continue uh, working out our salvation in fear and trembling and obeying the word of God so that we may count to be among those people who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Is there any question from there? Is there any question? Or apart from any question, is there anyone who would like to add something? Am I clear? Okay. So we are going to the last section, and that is the, uh, from verse 30 all the way to 33. And it's about Israelite, uh, Israel and belief. About Israel and belief. I'd like someone to read uh, from verse 30. To 31. 30 to 31. Anyone else apart from you? <laughs> yes, Jennifer. 30 from that from what shall we say then? that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it. That is a righteousness that is by faith. But that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did, did not pursue it by faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer. So in these last three verses, uh, we learn about uh, Jews lacking faith. Uh, they, try to, uh, they try to attain righteousness through works, and they rejected the Messiah. So they thought by working out, uh, uh, working out their way of what they seem to be, uh, the way of faith was through righteousness through works. But we uh, remember when we are tackling chapter 5, of Romans, we, we were able to understand well about uh, justification by faith. And it's only by faith alone that we can please God. It's, by, it's only by faith that we can please God. So the word of God says that we obtain righteousness through faith. The, uh, this is also demonstrated in the the Old Testament, we all know the heroes of faith. Uh, if you look at Hebrews chapter 11, uh, it has a list of 
people of faith. The, the, like Abraham, who is called uh, the father of faith. Him coming from a, a background of idolatry, a background of moon worship. He encountered God and through him we see the faith that he had unto God. There's something that I, re I learned today as I was listening to Pastor John Carson. And he was demonstrating um, the faith that he was trying uh, uh, to show the faith that Abraham, Abraham had. And if you read uh, Genesis chapter, I, I believe, 22, we see uh, the story of Abraham going to sacrifice his uh, son Isaac. And uh, as they were going uh, to, uh, to where, uh, I can't remember, the Mount Moriah, which we, which we later on come to understand it's where Christ was crucified. Uh, when they reach at the top, uh, the son, the son Isaac, asked, asked him, we have the fire is here, and the the nini the the firewood, but where is the where is the sacrifice? And Abraham uh, answered him very well, and he said. I, I love KJV. It, it says that, uh, Abraham said that God will provide himself a sacrifice. Other version says God uh, will provide for himself. But KJV says that, Abra Abraham quoted that, God will provide himself a sacrifice. That's a great prophecy. Maybe Abraham even maybe didn't know what he meant when he was saying that because God truly provided himself a sacrifice at Calvary many years later. We see that act of faith. Abraham knew that God will do something because God promised him a son. Many years he was longing for a son. Then this son came. Then God is telling him to go and sacrifice. So he knew that God is all-knowing and he, he has a way that he, he will provide uh, a sacrifice. So that's one of the examples that one of the heroes who, who we see in, uh, quoted in, even in Hebrews chapter 11, about faith. So uh, the, the Jews rejected uh, Christ. And in doing so, they lost the promises that Jesus brought. And that is forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Jesus was very harsh unto the Pharisees. Uh, in the book of John, chapter, I believe chapter 7, uh, whereby they brought, was it chapter 7 or 6, where they brought uh, an adulterous woman and they wanted to test Christ. But Christ in his own way, he asked, uh, he, he, he told them, if you've never sinned, be the first person to throw the stone to this, uh, to this uh, woman. And no one, from the old all to the young, everyone was able to go his own direction. But their act was to, to test Jesus, chapter 8 from verse 38. This is after uh, they, 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 they had that... that encounter with the, the adulter, adulterous woman. He said, uh, I am telling you that I have, I have seen in the Father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Then they, uh, they, told, him, uh, they told Jesus, Abraham is our father, they answered. If you are Abraham's children, Jesus said, then you will do what Abraham did as it is you are looking for a way to kill me. A man who has told you uh, the truth and that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not, uh, illegitimate, you are not illegitimate children, they protested. 
The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own way. I've, uh, God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks uh, his native language, for he is a liar and is the father of all lies. So here we see God was very harsh, uh, or Jesus rather was very harsh to the Pharisees because they were following the ways of their father. And their, Christ told them their father is the devil because, they were, because the devil was a murderer from the beginning. So in his own way, in, his, in their own ways, they were following uh, the devil. So I'm uh, trying to connect with what we are learning here is that uh, the Israelites' unbelief, the way they rejected the Messiah, it's because they were not following God. They tended, uh, they were saying in their, by their mouths that they are following God, but in their deeds they were not following the law of God. Amen. Amen. They had, uh, last, uh, last week we, uh, we saw uh, about them having privileges, having a covenant with God, having the law of God, which is the word of God, uh, having the patriarchs, that is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but still they chose to disobey God. They chose not to follow uh, the laws of God. Because if they followed the, the law of, the, of God from the beginning, Will, they, were, they could have been able to see that who Christ is. Because remember, uh, the Old Testament um, theologian says, says that uh, the Old Testament is Christ concealed and the New Testament is Christ revealed. So they could have, if they really followed the law of God, they could have the discernment of knowing Christ and they could have discerned that Christ has come. Amen. Amen. So they chose not uh, to, uh, to follow the law of God. Rather, they chose to work out their righteousness through works. You know, uh, Christianity is the only religion that we work out our uh, righteousness through faith. All other religions is through works, trying to justify yourself by doing good. There are religions that you, you, uh, you, maybe you sin in a particular way and in trying to redeem yourself, you do acts of so many um, good things like uh, being a philanthropist, helping the poor and all that. And through that you, you, you think now you'll go to heaven, but no. Our righteousness is through faith in Jesus Christ. So what do we learn about Israel? We see, the, uh, the, uh, we see Israel as not believing in God, even us as Christians. We are all paraphrased by being called Christians, but not all Christians that are born again. You know, when you're born in a Christian family, you automatically become a Christian. That is according to the world. But not unless you're a true, true follower of Jesus Christ. Not unless you have accepted Christ in your life. Not unless you're born again. There's no way we can inherit the kingdom of God. So brethren, uh, I beg to just end at that. That we, we have uh, we have done away now with uh, chapter nine, and I believe we have seen uh, the two main truths that we have learned this week, uh, this week and last week about God's sovereignty and about God's word that never fail. We we have seen the way the Old Testament was pointing to the prophecy about the 
about the Jews being rejected by God and the Gentiles being included into the family of God. We have seen how God, God's sovereignty work has worked from the beginning and it's still working even now. And I believe uh, through this we'll be able to understand why Paul's sorrow to the Israelites was there, why he was addressing this, this topic. Amen. So, uh, the, uh, chapter 10, we, we are going to have a look at the, uh, the state of Israel present and we'll see God's equity, whereby we'll see that uh, God is not a respecter of person. Then, chapter 11, we are going to see about Israel's future and we'll see God's integrity according to his word. Whatever his word says, he, uh, he is going to pass. And he, him alone, he knows the plans he has for the nation of Israel. So may God bless you and have a blessed week, that they remain, they have a blessed remaining uh, days that we have in this week. And I believe even next week, uh, God willing, we'll be here uh, sharing the word of God. Uh, next week, our... I, uh, our patron, that is our Reverend Joyce, uh, will will be the one who will be sharing. I believe so, and I know we'll all be blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So may God bless you. So I've seen there is no uh, there's, 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 uh, there's no leader uh, or rather deacon who is here. So um, uh, the announcements that we have for this week. Um, they're, they're just as usual. Uh, on Sunday, we'll have our services as usual from uh, 7.30, uh, 9.30, and 11.45. I don't think... And also, this coming Saturday, if you're a Bloom, there's a, there's a prayer breakfast that will be here all the way uh, from... beginning from 7 to around 10. So I think those are the, uh, the announcements that I have. So may God bless you. Uh, we have uh, our offering bag here. So I would like to call Mom, ja uh, Mom Stella to come and close for us with the word of prayer. And I believe we'll be blessed. Amen. Okay.
who you are to go back and how you have been so faithful to men, even from generations to generation. We bless your much name for your servant, Brother Paul, who has taken us through and who has taught us so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding him. Thank you for being there and also helping us to understand everything. We bless your mighty name. Thank you for those who have come and mighty Father for the time that you have given them even to sit and listen to you. Thank you for those who are not with us and they have been with us. Thank you for prayer that Lord, this world has gone by and wait and it will help so many people of us, King of God. And now, my God, as we leave this place, we pray that your blessing will grow with us and mighty Father, your glory will come on us to over. Thanking you for everything, even whatever is remaining up to Sunday, the programs that are ahead of us, oh my Father, everything will be written to you, Jehovah God, so that you may be the master, help us, oh God, and lead us. We bless your mighty name, may your peace be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.